people make a change in the country and have led a lot. We're discounted a lot. Between 14 and 24, they kind of discount us off to the side. But as Mr. Mara just said, we have leaders that have helped shape the nation. My name is Kevin Bailey. I'm running for Alderman in the 20th Ward. I'm a civil engineer, she said earlier, by trade and profession. I went to the University of Illinois. Um, did two Division One sports. And now I'm here running for Alderman in this area, the 20th Ward. We have a lot of issues in this community. Unemployment, hemorrhaging, violence, and it just keeps getting worse. All this stuff is going to continue to happen until you decide to make it stop. The power that's at hand and in control is not going to just let this stuff go. Regardless of who our mayor is, I've made my choice, but regardless of who our mayor is, you need to make sure that you stand up for what's right in your community. You need to make sure that your voice is heard and you tap your neighbor and get them involved and engaged in this process. Or else we're going to continue to see the blight that we have in our community. The crime, the violence, the deaths, and the closing schools that continue to cut our future shorter and shorter and shorter. This will all end when you step up. So this April 7th, step up, let your voice be heard, and get involved in the process. My name is Kevin Bailey, I run for Alderman 20th Ward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin Bailey. Uh, I'm going to be bringing up Bill Doc Walls in just a moment, but just understand this. When we uh, we're electing you vote for who you want, we have a chance to change city council. But you have to make sure that when we do make that change, you don't elect somebody that you're going to celebritize. You elect somebody that's going to go serve. So that means you have to challenge them. You have to be critical and make sure that you are analyzing everything that they're voting on and that they understand what they're voting on. There is, you know, we want to get rid of a rubber stamp council. There are two things in council that you got to understand. There is divided votes, and there are those votes that are that that are standard that. You know, we for our garbage services and street repavements and all that sort of stuff that we want to support uh, the mayor on doing. But the divided votes is the wish list. Those are not necessarily things that we have to have, and those you need to make sure that the equity is there in our communities. All right. So whoever you elect, make sure that you're there to support and challenge to make sure that they're bringing the right resources back to our communities. Bill Doc Walls coming up right now. Now, my job is to bring up some of the community leaders who helped organize this and give them a minute and a half. And I do mean a minute and a half. We're running for the train at this point, but the bottom line is we want you to be seen, we want you to be heard. Let's start with Harold Davis. Harold Davis, would you come up? Harold Davis is a radio personality, but more importantly, he's a community organizer. He's on the Big Gospel Express, and he'll tell you a little bit about himself and what his mission is. Well, thank you, Doc. Uh, I'm on the uh, radio Tuesday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., uh, WBGX 1570. And uh, it's not a lot to talk about, Doc. Well, I got something to talk about. It's economics. You know, no, no matter who you put in office, it's economics. Uh, in 1881, your school... <coughs> Tuskegee, 1881, first 21 buildings were built by black teenagers. They had 21 building trades in Tuskegee in 1881. 18 and 19 year old black children built 21 buildings. And right now we can't even get a job. I mean, what was so powerful about what Booker T. Washington did in 1881. And we sitting here today in 2015 begging folks for jobs. I mean, Booker T. and George Washington Carver, George Watkins Carver, are the only two black people on money. They got a 50 cent piece. I don't know if y'all know that. But there's, there's U.S. currency that has George, Wa George Watkins Carver and Booker T. Washington on it. And so we can sit there all day and talk about who we're going to elect. At the end of the day, we spend $1.2 trillion with people that don't look like us. There's a, there's a Korean shop that just opened up in the Best Buy on 89th and Lafayette, 46,000 square feet. 
And next door to him is his cousin with a 10,000 square feet store. And so we can talk all day about who we're going to elect, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. But if somebody has 100% of your, 99% of your money and 100% of theirs, then you give your power to, you give your money to. And so we can keep talking and talking and talking. And I'm tired of talking. I mean, I talk four days a week, two hours a day. And, and I say the same thing over and over. Until we get a hold of the economics in our community. Uh -huh. you, you have Koreans, uh, the American Clergy Leadership Council, that gives black preachers breakfasts once a month. And they pay the host pastor $7,000, and they have a policy that they don't give refunds, and the black clergy don't do nothing about it. And so, we'll just, what I close out? But this is how I close out. This is undisputed, untold, uncut, uncensored, unbought, unapologetic, straightforward, down the middle, butt naked truth. We say the things most you're afraid to think about or dream about. We say liberation with our continuation of the miseducation, the misinformation to the black man and black woman. Trade the world, trade with those who trade with you. Buy black, bring your dollars back. Thank you. Miss <laughs> Naomi Davis, Blacks and Green. Give me a minute and a half, please. Greetings, cousins. How y'all doing today? Hi. Got some spring out here. Okay, Blacks and Green works at the intersection of environment and economy. And that means like, you know what, if you can't breathe, you ain't going to be around here anyway. But if you're not increasing household income with your economic development, what the heck are you doing? So we create... The concept of the eight principles of green village building is how we can have walk to work, walk to uh, walk to work, walk to shop, walk to learn, walk to play villages in our neighborhoods. Some of us have been around long enough to remember a time when it was like that. And within a lifetime, those neighborhoods have become extinct. What are our elected officials doing with us, for us, on our behalf to bring back the place where our money can circulate vigorously before leaving? Are we accelerating the rate at which neighbor-owned businesses are created and sustained? Are we building the capacity of neighbors to own, develop, and manage the property in their community? Do we know anything about grannynomics anymore? The values that guided our households and ruled our transactions when small was plenty. Y'all remember how granny used to talk to us? All right. So, but it is up to us, and this is the moment. The Mayans said it, the, it's the end of the world, but guess what? It's the beginning of the world. Women power, hey, can I get an amen for women power? Nothing against the guys, we love you. But please, make sure that you are looking at the, 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 uh, the uh, CBCO Municipal Candidates Questionnaire to find out, did your elected official answer in support of the black agenda. You got other people here who are going to talk about that. For me, it's the walkable village. Okay? Walk to work, walk to shop, walk to learn, walk to play. The city of villages right here in a uh, uh, neighborhood where you live. Thank you. All right. Minister Caleb Muhammad. A minute and a half, please. From the West Side Mosque, number two. That's a kind of surprise. I wasn't expecting to say anything just to support my dear brother, Bill Doc Walls. Real brief, if we're going to work the political system, there's right now 19 automatic runoffs that's about to take place in the city. Nine of those runoffs are in black wards. Now, if we're going to do this, it's time for us to organize in the next three weeks like we have never organized before. It's time for us to right now to invigorate. It's time for us to inspire and motivate a lot of the young and those who have not come out to give them hope and inspire them that if we do this properly, then we can make a change in this system if that's how you're going to do it. 
whether you get the particular autumn or the mayor that you want to be in office or not, it's time to restore the strong council, weak mayor concept back into Chicago. And so it's time for the people to realize and grab a hold to the power that the people truly have right now. So it's no longer of us needing to be begging and crying and moaning and groaning because we have an opportunity that's faced us on April the 7th to take back control of our city and our neighborhoods, but we have to do it from a collective manner. So there's no need of us no longer whining and complaining right now. It's time for us to get together in our communities and understand that if we want to see the change in Chicago, we have to be the change that we want to see. We have to make the change right now that's necessary. So in the next three weeks, let's get together and let's work hard and let's bring about the change that we want to do. Thank you, all. Good, Doc. Next is Dr. Ayo Mayat. She's representing Improve and Paratransit. Make some noise, Paratransit riders. Yes! We are here because we support disabled people owning their own accessible transportation. We have been abused. We ride around in vehicles for three to four hours. Sometimes we get ill. We can't eat. We can't use the toilet. Many of you wonder why we don't have a thousand disabled people here. Some of them couldn't make it because the paratransit is not affordable to them. You will see us from the north side of Chicago through the south side and west side. We go everywhere that the CTA allows the paratransit to ride. So we are everywhere. We need these candidates to stand up and take the paratransit back from PACE. They are abusive. A lot of our people have died. Yes, they have died because they couldn't make it home to take their medicine. They couldn't get to the doctors. They take us five to six hours out of our way. Susan is there. She can tell you. Candace, uh, Patricia, all of them can tell you. I myself have been stranded six hours. I have missed meetings, doctor's appointments, etc. But I'm here today. Please support us because we're moving forward. We've been around for 15 years. The Black Network and Children's Emotional Health sponsors us. We have a youth organization. We support the Youth Leadership Alliance. And I am glad to sit down and let these young people stand up. Thank you. Thank you. The next voice you'll hear is Mr. Mark Carter, Voices of the Ex-Offender. Good evening, good evening, black folks and everybody else that came in to support. Let me say this to you all. We talk about a weak mayor and a strong council. Rom is the most weak mayor that you can ever have right now. And I'm not saying go to Rom or Chewy. I'm saying to you to take your power and make whoever gets in office be into your agenda. Those of you holding signs for Chewy, if you're not at the table, then you're on the menu. Those of you who are holding signs for rum, if you're not at the table, you are on the menu. You have been on the, you've been, you've been on the menu. You haven't got anything from these people in 40 years. 43 years of my life that I know you haven't gotten anything. So we shouldn't be out here in support of nobody until our agenda is, is, is met on. Rahm Emanuel took the laws and changed it where you have to pay $2,000 to get your car to the pound if they pull you over and, and, and impound your car. And no, you don't have to have drugs or alcohol in order for them to take it. Chewy has been around since Hal Washington died and haven't done a nut. I almost cursed. <laughs> haven't done a thing, y'all, for you. Stop running around and talking about you with Chewy or with rum. You better be with the people. You put the agenda on the table. Rom has a $1.3 billion five-year housing plan to put you out of this city, and the black elected official is in agreement with it. Every single one of them. Matter of fact, there is no black, white, or Hispanic politician. They're all the Democratic Party, and they got it in for you. And if we don't take it and we organize strong organizations from right here, this point, to make all of these elected officials do what we tell them to do because they are in position to take orders, not give them. We're going to get wiped out, you all. So when we leave here today, let's take social media. 
But let's keep pumping this undecided message.